Hello everybody, welcome to Letters from Jen. As you know, we've been on a series concerning the battle of the mind and we've discussed how the devil is really there to get a foothold into our lives, especially in the area of our thoughts, so that he can take us down and cause absolute trouble in our lives. But there is a way that we can learn from the Word of God how to stand up against the enemy. So let's go straight to the Word of God now and find out more about it. Have you ever found yourself facing a circumstance that has left you feeling hopeless or perhaps driven you to a place of despair. Now what would you say if I told you that your circumstance doesn't have the power to define you or your future and that no matter how difficult or wretched your situation may seem, it doesn't have to determine who you are now or the person that you're going to become in the future. Now, since we've been doing a study on the battle of the mind, I've really learned some remarkable truths from the Word of God. And yes, we do have an enemy, the devil, who is relentless in his pursuit to destroy all hope and peace and joy in our lives. But we also have a savior who has overcome the devil and his power to harm us. Jesus has made it possible for us to not only be um, protected from the enemy's onslaught, but to actually push him back and to cause him to flee from us in fear. Now, no matter how we may have come to be in the challenging circumstances we face, whether by our own doing or not, there is a way for us to overcome and rise above our circumstance victoriously. And in the next two letters, I want to show you how. Now, throughout the series, I've been referring to material that I found from Dr. Michelle Stradom, Katie Souza, and Rick Renner's teachings on the subject. So what I'm trying to explain or get across to you from all of these teachings is that there is a way that we can stand up to the devil and build a wall of defense around our minds to keep him out. There is a strategy to set him on the run so we can continuously remain victorious and free from hopelessness and despair. Now, in the previous letters, we learned how cracks in the personal walls of our lives give the devil legal access to not only steal from us, but actually torment us and destroy our hope. Now, these cracks could be areas in our past where we actually violated a spiritual law or a principle. Now, they could also be caused from the way that we respond to an attack that was spiritually manipulated and launched against us. Now, our emotions could have spun out of control in a circumstance where we blindly lashed out in grief or even in anger. Now, many times, even a traumatic experience can leave us emotionally shattered and broken, and it forms wounds in our souls. You see, we could have been so overcome with fear or hurt that we chose to align our thoughts with the ideas and the lies that are contrary to God's word of truth. Now, either way, it is important for us to understand that if we allow him to, the devil will push us around and he will manipulate our thoughts. And, and that'll always instill mistrust and worry and fear. Not only to do, uh, do these negative thoughts dominate our attention, then they actually form negative strongholds in our minds. Now, attached to those thoughts are dangerous emotions that will trigger off and release toxic chemicals making our physical bodies sick. But praise God for Jesus. His blood is more than powerful to cover over every wound and sickness and heal us. And once we have repented and surrendered our lives anew, it's time to move forward in victory. We can stand up to the devil. We can cast him right out of affairs and build a wall of defense to keep him out, making us free from his hold over us. Now, since we're familiar with repenting and by faith believing our past is under the blood of Jesus, I want to talk about standing up to the devil and casting him out of our affairs. Now, James 4 verse 7 says, So, be subject to God. 
resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Now, the word submit here actually means to agree with and surrender to an acknowledged higher authority. Now, one translation actually says it means to hide behind someone's back, showing there is protection in submission. I just love that. So in other words, before we stand up to and resist the devil, this is the position that the Bible tells us to take. We are to completely surrender to the protection and the safety of our Savior. Now we find ourselves tucked in, close up against him and under his covering of love and protection of his presence. In that position of confidence in the one who covers us, we resist the devil. Now the word resist means to stand against. It actually speaks of a military term that suggests a pre-planned resistance. Don't you just love that phrase? A pre-planned resistance. In other words, a well thought out strategy and one that I'm going to share with you in next week's letter. But before we learn about that strategy, for now, we're going to understand that in order for us to walk in our emotional freedom and physical healing because of the sickness that came from wounds in our souls, repentance is only the first step. You see, we have to decide to find our identity in Christ again. So. How do we do this? We spend quality time with the Holy Spirit, surrendering to His presence while we saturate our minds in the promises of God's Word. This is how we're going to find ourselves in that position of being fully submitted to God. Remember, that's the first place to be. It's a place from which we can confidently stand against the devil and push him right out of our personal affairs. First, we submit. Now, Katie Souza, she's the founder of Expected End Ministries, and he ha uh, she has some powerful teachings on how to actually soak your soul in the healing presence of Jesus while the promises of His Word are saturating our minds. Now, if you're needing to move forward in your freedom and your healing, I really recommend that you look her up on YouTube. Her ministry is incredibly powerful. Now, as I mentioned, in the next two weeks, in fact, this week's letter and next week's letter, we are going to learn about the strategy of actually coming against and resisting the devil in that pre-planned attack. But before we do that, remember, we first want to find ourselves in a place of submission because only in that position where we've completely repented, we've surrendered ourselves to Jesus, we've laid everything down on the cross, covering our sin that was in the past or covering the way we react that was wrong and caused the trouble in the first place, just putting all of that under the blood of Jesus and then coming to the place where we boldly and confidently come before Him, get into His presence, submit to that presence, yield to His Holy Spirit and let Him completely shower you and, and flow. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, it speaks about how as we lift our hearts towards Him or lift our eyes towards Him, the Holy Spirit floods our hearts with the love of God and it's that love that conquers everything. It's that that love that brings the healing power of God into our lives and it saturates us with his peace and with his joy. This is the position of being submitted to the Lord Jesus. And when we're in that place of submission, where we're hiding behind him in his protection, that we can confidently and boldly stand up against the devil, which is exactly what we're going to learn about in next week's lesson. So until then, remember to submit yourself to Jesus. Really yield to the presence of the Holy Spirit and from that position you'll learn how you can stand your ground. Until next week, God bless you and goodbye.